he is a fool because only a simple soul has the innocent faith to undertake such a journey with all its hazards and pain. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm here to introduce my Season 3 team, Reason 13. Why did I pick a name like this? Well, it sounded kind of ominous, um, but uh, I was the 13th pick of our 14-team league, and uh, I had some pretty spooky Pokemon, so I wanted to have a kind of spooky name. Um, that's kind of the long and short of that. Um, sorry if I ruined the mystique by uh, being a goober, but let's get into the team. So first we have 13, uh, the card with no name, if you're familiar with the tarot card. Some people would call it death, but I don't know. I think the card with no name sounds way, way cooler. Um, this is uh, my Dragapult. Um, you might be asking yourself, how in the world did you get Dragapult with the 13th overall pick? Well, I made some trades, and uh, basically, I managed to get the 4th overall pick and the 9th overall pick by trading some of my middle draft picks. Um, I was very, very happy to get the 4th overall pick because... I knew that Dragapult was quite likely to fall uh, to that area because uh, both of the first two picks uh, have used Dragapult in a previous uh, league and did not want to use Dragapult again, uh, which is totally fair. But Dragapult is, in my opinion, the highest value uh, pick in the draft. I think Iron Valiant is a close second, and I do not think that there's a close third. Um, so I'm... I'm very happy to get Dragapult. Uh, for my next pick, which was also a first rounder, a ninth overall pick, um, I decided to take uh, Slow King Galar, uh, the Hermit. Um, I've also put the cost of these, uh, I should have probably mentioned. Uh, we'll go back to Dragapult. If you notice, Dragapult cost me 24 points. For this draft league, we've extended the top tiers of Pokemon, so things that used to be 19, 18, 17 points from our old league have kind of been uh, pushed up uh, all the way to 24 at the max. Uh, we have 23, 22, all the way down back to 16. 16 is relatively similar to what it was on the previous draft board, um, but... We also did adjust some Pokemon that we thought maybe were a little higher value than we had previously thought. Some that we think we overrated a bit. Um, overall, pretty happy with the how the board looks. And even though Dragapult is 24 points, about, what, 5 points more expensive than what we previously had it for, I'm still happy to get it. Um, yeah, now on to Slowking. I think Slowking is one of the best just Pokemon to put on your team, frankly. Um, it's not something that's going to carry me to a win, I don't think. It's got a pretty respectable 110 special attack um, and good defenses, so it might be able to uh, muscle through certain teams that don't have a strong wall breaker, but, you know, being 30 speed... And having so many good support move sets, I think that's mostly what I'm going to be using Sloking for. That's at least the plan. Um, and we'll let Dragapult handle winning the games. Um, now, both of these Pokemon are weak to Ghost and Dark, so maybe I would need to think about what I need to do to uh, stop a strong ghost or dark type Pokemon from taking over, but I figured that once I got to my second round pick, I might just take a strong dark type to dissuade people from using it against me. Um, also have a, another great speed tier here. Uh, I took the High Priestess, Weavile. Um, Weavile being 125 base speed is really good. 
Uh, with these two, I've got with uh, well, between these three, I have something one four that's base 142, one that's base 125, and then Slow King is just a good pivot. So it's got that slow chili reception, which will also help out with uh, Weavile's defenses because setting snow is gonna obviously give me a 1.5 times defense boost on Weavile. I don't know how much that will come into play because Weavile's got a pretty paltry uh, base 65 defense and 70 HP that I'm not very likely to invest in. Um, so I'm not so concerned with uh, that aspect of this team synergy. But what I am excited about is having a fast U-turner and having a slow pivoter uh, to be able to find good opportunities for Weavile to come in. Um, for 16 points, I thought this was quite worth it. Uh, next, I did not have a pick for a while because I had traded away my third round pick and my fourth round pick in order to get uh, all of the these three so early. Um, I think I still hit a pretty good core, um, but to help bolster this, we have uh, Ogre Pond, Cornerstone, The Fool. Uh, originally, I don't believe I took Ogre Pond this early. Um, I might have taken something like Cyclozar or Serena or something like that for a rapid spinner, but I found uh, a rapid spinner that I was more interested in having um, and adjusted my points around so I could afford something like Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond is another great addition to the team, I think, because it's got the base 110 speed. It has spikes as an option. Um, Encore is a good support move. Uh, and a really solid base 120 attack stat with a 100% accurate rock type move. Um, you're not going to get much better than that, frankly, for a rock type physical attacker other than like iron boulder but that's way too expensive for what i have so uh did not end up going that route anyway um yeah an, another u-turner i think we've got a lot of really good offensive presence on this team which is really nice and also we're pretty fast ogre pond is the third fastest pokemon that i revealed so far and it's base 110 there are going to be a lot of teams in this league whose fastest is maybe just above 100. Um, so having potentially three Pokemon faster than your entire team is going to make it quite difficult for anybody who's in that situation to uh, keep momentum. Um, they'll probably have to go a more defensive route, which is uh, usually not preferred. Uh, in my opinion, unless you're playing like a really dedicated stall team, but I, my philosophy is that it's stall is really bad when you can only have one boots. But anyway, next we have the chariot, uh, Flygon. Uh, Flygon is a Terra Captain this time. Uh, what's nice about uh, a Terra Captain Flygon? Uh, it has Boom Burst, and I can get a Stab Boom Burst. Now, granted, it's off of a base 80 special attack, which is not fantastic, but it might be good enough to sweep in the end game. Uh, Steel is just a good defensive Terra type, especially for a Pokemon with Levitate. Um, I'm looking to probably get a Dragon Dance sweep off by going Terra Steel at a good time uh, and, you know, snowballing the game from there. Um, I didn't think I'd be a big fan of Flygon, and I'm still not 100% uh, convinced that Flygon's going to be great, or even the best Terra Captain in the league, but I thought it was going to be a pretty solid option, and, uh, you know, you can't really uh, hate on uh, Earthquake immunity. Granted, I wasn't extremely Earthquake weak, but uh, I did have the one... Uh, slow King weak to it. Uh, it's nice to get a resist to go with your uh, weakness. Uh, 
in any case, we have the moon, Vile Plume. Vile Plume is a Pokemon that I love using in low tiers. Uh, I think a poison type is in low tiers where there are quite a few fighting types is really nice. Um, I don't know, I don't think that there are a ton of fighting types uh, in this particular draft league. I, you know, Mian Xiao was taken by somebody. Uh, I believe Annihilate was taken by somebody, Halucha, and Vileplume has uh, various decent matchups into some of those. Maybe not so much Halucha uh, <laughs> as a good matchup. But Mian Shao, for example, is a quite a decent matchup. Um, it's got Chlorophyll. There is another Sun team this league. Uh, not quite the same as the two Sun teams from last league. But uh, if I happen to play against that person in playoffs, I don't think I play them in the regular season. Then maybe uh, Vileplume becomes a decent win con against that team. Um, but I... I just like Vileplume's defensive profile, uh, a poison type that has Strength Sap is really solid in my books, uh, especially if the opponent has a lot of fighting types um, or a prominent fighting type. Next we have Temperance, the Sylveon. Um, Sylveon is going to be a good defensive backbone for this team. I think between... Uh, Glowking and Sylveon will have a pretty solid defensive core. Um, Glowking is going to be really good at taking on uh, like a general Pokemon, uh, especially things that struggle to hit a poison type like a grass type or like a uh, fighting type. Sylveon also good against the fighting types. Um, Granted, I don't have a ton of fighting week. I guess I've got Sylveon, or sorry, Weavile and Ogre Pond. Um, so I can keep myself safe there. But uh, Sylveon's got the really high special defense. It's got a serviceable defense for having base 95 HP. Um, it's got Wish, which is going to be really good. I love a Wish Passer, and I love a defensive Fairy type. And Sylveon just yeah, happened to fit for a good amount of points. Um, I would thought about doing Tinkaton, but while Steel Fairy is a great type, I don't think it's quite what I'm looking for, for uh, like a defensive Fairy type. I don't love being uh, Earthquake weak, whereas, uh, you know, Sylveon's Earthquake neutral. Um, definitely a good pickup, I think. Next we have The Rock, because I just cannot resist drafting uh, Tauros. I think Tauros is a great mon. In this particular case, I have the Water Tauros. Uh, Paldea Water, whatever you want to call it. It has the same base stats as uh, regular Paldean and uh, the Blaze version. But, you know, this the Water is the one that I have not used. Um, I do like Blaze probably the most at least on paper, because of access to Will-O-Wisp. And I think Fire Stab is a little better offensively than Water Stab. Uh, mostly because you can hit Steel types for super effective. Um, but Water is still pretty solid. You have better uh, moves like Wave Crash and Aqua Jet that uh, Blaze has no equivalent for. Um, and... I still like water fighting as a defensive type. You know, you're similarly you uh, similarly to Blaze, your dual stabs resist uh, King Gambit, for example. Um, they resist, you know, uh, other water types, which can be good. Uh, there, I don't know how many super fantastic water types were picked up. I don't think something like Suicune was. But uh, if there happens to be a threatening bulky water, uh, then the rock should hopefully be able to handle it. Uh, we have Trailblaze as an option to hit those times four weak to uh, grass mons like Quagsire. 
um, which I, I again I'm not exactly sure how many of those were picked up. It was re it's really hard for me to keep track of this because we did our draft within like a two hour period between 14 people. I did not have the time to really study everybody's teams. Um, but in any case, I do think that the Rock is a solid uh, defensive uh, presence on the team, uh, having Intimidate, all that good stuff, but also uh, strong enough to have an offensive presence as well. Um, very happy with this pickup. Next, we have the Tower uh, Colossal, running it back with Colossal. Now, I know I talked about uh, ground weaknesses and how I don't love to have them, um, but uh, I think Colossal is fair for this because as a, a Terra Captain, it always has the option to go Terra Flying. Terra Flying is really nice because I'm dropping my times four ground weakness and my fighting weakness for resists and, well, I guess immunity in the case of ground. Um, I also like not being uh, weak to water. Uh, that's good. Uh, gives Steam Engine a little bit more of a threatening factor to it, just in case somebody has, again, a good water type. Or Shifu was picked up, I believe. So uh, maybe we'll have some good luck against that. Who's to say? Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Water, I think, is a very strong... Uh, defensive Terra type uh, on most Pokemon and especially on uh, Colossal who wants to not be weak to water and potentially get its steam engine going uh, even still it's even if we're not facing a water type it, water's just got a lot of neutral uh, interactions and based on uh, 110, 120, 90 uh, defensive profile I think that we'll have a lot of success with this this is another spiker this is a potential rocker uh this is my spinner i think it's the only spinner on my team so uh i may be looking to make some moves in free agency or in player trades to get another spinner but um as it stands it's not the worst to only have one spinner as and if the spinner is uh colossal i think i'm fine with that there is a team that has uh What's his name? Goldengo. But uh, I don't play that team in regular season. And I have, you know, fire stab ground moves to hit that Goldengo in case it's trying to spin block. Um, next, and I believe finally for my team, I have Alolan Persian Judgment. Uh, Persian is another fast Pokemon. I believe it's... The, I believe it's the third fastest Pokemon on my team. Because um, it's faster than Ogre Pond, but not quite as fast as Weavile. Um, unless I forgot that I had a base 120 in there somewhere. Um, I like I like the speed on Persian because of Parting Shot. Uh, Parting Shot is a very good pivoting move. I think one of the more underrated pivoting moves. Um, and... You know, if you're faster than the opponent, you can parting shot, lower their offensive stats, and go into your uh, defensive counter, and yeah, soak up a lot of damage that way. Uh, Persian also has fur coat, which is I think a really good ability. You know, if I invest into my defenses and then have fur coat, I've effectively got something like a base 130, base 140. Uh, defense Pokemon, maybe even higher if I go max defense. Um, now I know you're saying, well, does the fur coat double it? Uh, and you're base 60, so aren't you effectively base 120? Well, w these abilities that double your stats, like huge power and fur coat, uh, they also include your investment, like your EVs and your nature, so you can boost well beyond what would be typical for a double base stat um that's why things like azumarill seem to hit really hard even though they only have a base what is it 50 attack stat you're like 
A base 100 is not that strong, but like because it's doubling that adamant nature and those uh, 63 extra points from the EVs, it's way stronger than the typical base 100. Um, and yeah, I hope that will hold true for judgment. Um, but uh, it is only a four pointer. Uh, it is another dark type, which one could say that having too many of the same type on a team could be bad, um, especially on an offensive team. And this is a lot more offensive than most draft teams that I would typically build. Uh, it doesn't have Clefable on it, for example. <laughs> um, but I think that this is fine because, you know, your four pointer is going to only going to really come when it has a good matchup so if i'm up against somebody who's got a strong ghost type for example somebody has spectrier um maybe like a special defensive uh persian finds a good uh niche in that matchup um moreover uh i just think that uh with fur coat, with uh, a fast parting shot, uh, Persian can sort of overcome uh, its weaknesses, whatever its defensive problems are, because it's very easy to uh, pivot out of bad situations and also uh, muscle through some of the like lower power uh, offensive threats. Maybe you know somebody's got their Terra Captain uh, who has a uh, kind of mediocre offensive uh, bag and I can take advantage of that um, I spent a lot of time talking about Persian who's a four pointer that's probably going to come to one or two games but <laughs> uh, it is what it is um, another rule that has been added this league um, and maybe i should also talk about like the schedule that we only have an eight game regular season uh instead of a round robin you know 13 games would be a lot we already thought 11 was kind of a lot um as evident by the fact that as i'm recording this i haven't even recorded some of the videos that i was intending to record for the last season um so <laughs> hopefully we can avoid some burnout uh, by having a shorter season. Um, in any case, uh, eight opponents. Uh, end of week four is the trade deadline. Uh, whatever your final team looks like, each of the Pokemon on that team has to log at least one appearance in, uh, in your games. Well, rather not each Pokemon, but uh, uh, at least 10 of the Pokemon on your team. In my case, I only have 10 Pokemon on my team. So that would be all of them. Some people may have 11 or 12 and they have the luxury to choose one or two of their Pokemon to not bring to a game. Um, I have, uh, and if you do not bring each of those Pokemon, um, at least 10 of them to at least one time, uh, you will not be eligible for playoffs. So I tried to make sure that I picked low point Pokemon that would have a niche that would be easy to bring to a game. Persian, I think it was a good example. It's, you know, a fast parting shot Pokemon can be useful in a lot of matchups, uh, not just ones where like they only have good dark and ghost types that I get easy resists on. Uh, Colossal being my only spinner, I mean, it's going to come to a lot of games anyway, but also is a pretty good Terra Captain. Um, Tauros, again, fast, Intimidator, you're not going to complain about that. Um, and I could go on and on uh, up the list, but I think that over each of these mons is very strong individually um, relative to the uh, points that they were worth. Um, and that they will all work together really well. So yes, I'm really happy about this draft team. Um, I hope to make more videos. Uh, I hope to uh, 
uh, win some games, and I hope to see you all next time for the next reason. <laughs>